GiantKiller.co and the By George Podcasting Network present the By George Podcast with Brian Lawrence and Chris Jones. The original George Mason Basketball Podcast. They're on their feet. Here, Hancock! Oh! Ah! Off the top of the backboard, no. Loose, Hancock, front court, Johnson. One face and coin, George Mason. Today is different than any other day. And no, it's not because you're buying chocolates or flowers or taking your woman out uh, to Wood dinner. Or man. We, we, we don't know who's <laughs> listening. Um, but no, it's Sherrod Wright's day. It is. Uh, a, a game that you know many of us will remember forever. I wasn't there, but Chris Jones, you were. Yeah, that was the Valentine's Day classic. Um, I remember specifically being in a grad school class um, and dipping out at like the halfway point of the class, you know, when they have like a bathroom break, rode my bike over to, to Eagle Bank or Patriot Center at the time, um, or Eagle Bank, I don't know what it was called, but either way, got there, uh, witnessed probably the greatest comeback in Mason history. Uh, this, this, you know, I, I, I forget the, the actual score of when I showed up, but, uh, you know, we, we put up like a, a six points late and then Sherrod Wright, obviously with the buzzer beater, wonderful day did you um, storm the court no um but the place was just going nuts uh, yeah. I, it it just felt good and this was like the hewitt era so it, it was um you know just after coach L, there were still like decent student crowds a lot of people showed up i remember for a valentine's day night i was very surprised so that leads me to today valentine's day and the fact that we just are coming off of our um stomping of vcu again and you and were there i couldn't make my way down this time i i, I regret it obviously in retrospect everybody regrets it yeah um but you know what was the atmosphere like there's you know a lot of debate from a a10 talk talking about it being kind of empty in sections what'd you see so I saw that, and and it did feel it looked a little empty early on, uh, like around warmups. But that that place was packed. Uh, it sounded packed at you know certain points, and yeah, I, I thought it was like a pretty raucous environment. I thought that our um, our players played through that well. It, it's it's about as hostile of an environment as you're going to get in the A10, uh, outside of maybe a Dayton, uh, but. Kudos to our guys and the few people that showed up. I, I think a lot of people wrote this game off as sort of the automatic loss. And, uh, you know, Vegas had us at 14 point dogs. And, you know, for, for us to be only down three at halftime, um, I thought we, we sort of made that statement early and uh, we carried through. It, it never really felt like VCU could win it. Even we had- when they were up at half, it never really felt like they were in control of the, uh, the game at all. We had to score early, both in the first half and the second. You you know that VCU can pour it on late. You know they can score in bunches, turn you over on your own baseline, chuck up threes. It's their game. You want to keep them out of it, though, all game long. And I think we did a really good job of that. And it's something that me and you talk about quite often, not only on this podcast, but just together, um, is our center position. You know, sometimes I feel like we completely neglect it. I feel like we've rotated it too much between three different guys. AJ's not really playing much of the center anymore. He's now back into his natural position at the four. And you're seeing the rotation again of Kalix and Oduro almost splitting minutes. Kalix got hurt in the Cayman continue to get hurt a couple more times and you still see him on the on the bike um, when he's not in the game sometimes so you can tell he's he's stiffening up um, I, I just think yeah, against VCU we actually worked through our centers and I think it showed good results yeah and I, I was kind of talking to you about this uh, earlier just because both of our centers don't get a ton of playing time they sort of almost operate as one unit so sometimes when I look at like the box score I sort of uh, you know, Oduro and Kalix, I kind of combine what they did and, and just look at that as our center points. And so we got 15 out of them collectively. Uh, you know, we got, uh, you know, 12 rebounds. So 15 and 12 from our center position. Uh, that's very encouraging going up against uh, a Santo Silva. Um, you know, they're a very lengthy team. Aduro and Kalix were just doing, you know, fundamentally solid things under the basket. They weren't missing easy layups. Um, they they played bigger than normally. They they were creating like a lot of space and using their bodies. And I thought that they were 
um, you know, low key some of the, you know, the bigger reasons as to why we won this game. Yeah, and you look at it, Kalix didn't miss a shot, four for four. Um, but really, the rebounding, it goes to Arduro. I mean, he had nine uh, mm-hmm. in 20 minutes. Uh, it's just, you can, t- everyone, you know, e- even you at times question him. And I think it's because of more of his look, though he just kind of still looks young, like a Pillsbury Doughboy. Um, but as soon as he fills out, I mean, that guy is six nine, like what, 250? I mean, yeah, the- he, he, yeah, I think what maybe turn what turns like a lot of people off of him is is yeah the the look he looks like a baby face you know kid out there but you know you, you also want to see some like uber athleticism you know signs of a, a higher upside that you could point to later on like you know like aj essentially where you, you can at least project in your mind if Paulson can work with this kid, you know, maybe he could be a freak. But here, you know, what what Aduro's strength is, it's not athleticism, it's just like pure fundamentals and just staying within his role. And I I thought he did that really well on um, the other night against VCU and didn't try to do too much. Um, I I, I thought he just played exceptional that that night. Again, he only had, you know, seven and nine himself, but probably one of the uh, better games he's played thus far. So... Yeah, I, I thought that he had an exceptional game. And then, you know, we were just talking about A.J. Wilson, but he had five blocks. I mean, he was just going nuts. Uh, did you want to talk about sort of how Paulson's starting to utilize him on defense and switching and, and how yeah. he's kind of making a statement? Well, first of all, he broke the all seasons, uh, the all time season record in blocks. Oh, yeah, he did that. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty incredible because this is a guy that, you know, didn't even get many starts last year. You know, yeah, we had injuries and eventually he finds himself some playing time, but really we've seen a lot of improvement. And I talked to him after the Cayman Classics and he explained to me that like they've allowed him to freelance on help side. So he can leave his man, especially when he's on bigs that can't shoot, and he can come and help side block. And we've just seen it time and time again. He had, he had five against VCU uh, and, and that's, you know, He's now fourth in the nation. I mean, these are these are stats that at this point of the season you have to enjoy, you have to look up to, uh, and you got to hope that he just kind of shatters George Evans. So and it's not it's not even so much the blocks, but what I saw like in person, I saw so many looks that looked as if you know a player would get the ball and he'd have plenty of space around him, but AJ would just sort of make a step or two, and that player would just hesitate. Because they thought that he may jump up and block this shot. So it's even, you know, I, I know we've talked about it before, but what's, you know, almost as important as blocking the shot is the thought of him possibly block, blocking your shot, whether that's altering, um, you know, your shot or you defer and pass it along just because you're, you're, you're scared you don't have the look anymore. So uh, AJ is just doing things um, so well this year. I, I don't know. It, he, he has to be. Uh, you know, the most improved player on the team and as of right now, our MVP, right? Yeah, and he's got to be like at least in the conversation for most improved in the entire A-10 from, you know, non-starter to being ranked nationally in a stat. You know, he may not win it, but I think he's at least in the conversation. Um, He's he's definitely a lock potentially for A-10 player or defensive player of the year, right? I mean, I don't don't know who else would, would even come close, right? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be Oshun or someone like that. You know, some, someone they, they, they tend to lean towards blocks. You yeah. know, that, that's yeah, kind of a stat I, that they can kind of circle and go, well. I think that they're, I think he's going to have a chance to at least be in a bunch of conversations come the end of the season, especially if we rattle off some wins. You mentioned uh, Aduro just kind of staying in his lane and doing the, doing, you know, what he can. I think that's what the entire team did. You look for, from top to bottom, yeah. n- not one person necessarily tore it up. Yeah, AJ had 14 and 11, but look, look at, look but at the But no rest one of- bombed. That was the right. thing. Everyone did, like, even Mar had four points. You know, like, it's just like, Every guy contributed. Every guy that got into the game and played contributed. And and that's something that, you know, is if we can get day in and day out, we're a good team. We proved that out of conference. Yeah, we know it was a cupcake schedule, um, but we showed promise. I think, you know, once Kyer got hurt again, it just kind of everyone was deflated and we just kind of looked lost. But yesterday, we I, it just kind of seemed like we had a different demeanor. I read from a couple VCU Twitter people that said, you know, the, that Mason got out there and got to shoot around early, like earlier than normal teams do. And I think it was just like, hey, we can't continue to be the laughing stock. You know, 
GW's next, and we'll get to that. We'll get to that right now. But beating GW and potentially getting out of like you know locked into the pig is pretty massive. I think. Um, I think that and fear, gives us hope going into the next couple games after. The fear of the pig is honestly the thing that needs to light sort of that fire under our ass. I think you you. Uh, now have a shot of getting out of the pig game. I mean, after the UMass game, it 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 felt like a lock. And so now that this VCU win occurred, this was not a win that we were expecting to have. So People we, predicted 30-point losses. Like, you can go to our Twitter right now, certainly. search by George GMU, into our replies. 35-point losses. I, right. I, I, saw <laughs> it, I saw it all. But here's the thing, though. It's like now that you get this little sneak win, now you still have Fordham. You still have a GW. You still have some winnable games. A St. So, jo- like, yeah, we, we, Joe, yeah. So, I mean, it's you You got to you got to rattle off some wins here. The real issue with Pig, and I'm going to be qu- quite frank, because Wednesday, Thursday, we're not – I don't – probably not going to get past Thursday. Please prove me wrong. But, you know, it's 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 more about us getting there. They're daytime games now. Like, we have, we're we going to get up there Wednesday morning? You know, like, if we have to, we have to this year. But, like, I just want to not be involved on Wednesday altogether for multiple reasons. Right. And, and that's always a poorly attended game. I mean, it's essentially like they're playing in an open arena. Um you know, there's usually like a few fans sprinkled in, but who could get to Brooklyn, at, you know, by the afternoon on a Wednesday? I mean, you have to live in the city. I mean, it's just, I don't know. Yeah. We're just going to have to get on an early bus ride. But um, but back to the game, uh, I, I just want to say that, um, you know, th- this was sort of, uh, I, I guess this, this is the type of game where you either, you know, it's an aberration. It's a thing that just, you know, it could just be a random one-off win or... Or is this something that may turn the season around? Maybe we get go on a little heater. Maybe we enter the A10 tournament a little hot. Um, you know, maybe we went through our dry spell. We went through our 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 you know problematic point of the season. I don't know, but I'm just saying that what we do this Saturday versus GW is going to be that indication of how we sort of bounce back. Yeah, and I'm looking at I'm looking at VCU's stats. We really did handle Santa Silva. We did. I mean, 33 minutes, 11 points, seven rebounds. Like that's a good day, but it's not a dominating day. And then you look at uh, Evans. You know, we we joked about him early on. He, it looks like he he unfortunately suffered a bad injury. But 18 minutes, one point, one rebound, one assist. You know, he has to be a guy that attacks our smaller guards. And I thought XJ won that battle with all of their guards. And XJ, you know, people are asking for dogs, and we're kind of a part of that. Like you know. We need some some more guys like that, but XJ is someone to build around. Uh, he handled that press like a champ. He zero did, he, turnovers. Zero turnovers, and he looked calm, cool, collected. I know late in the game when he had the ball, um, you know, when there was a little bit of a VCU run late, he still was, you know, just calmly going down the court, beating the press. Uh, you know, his dribbling skills were just phenomenal, and yeah. We, we didn't fall victim to havoc. I mean, there, there were certain points where, you know, we, we turned the ball over and they got some easy buckets. But, uh, you know, we were always able to sort of neutralize that with a basket of our own. And, you know, they never really got that momentum swing. Um, so all around great game. Everybody stayed in their lanes. Everyone executed. No one played terribly. No one really excelled and took over the game either. So it was just kind of this, you know nice team win and you saw it from the team later i mean when they went back into the locker room um you know dp and the team they were they were celebrating they needed this it it felt like a super bowl victory they legit raged i mean they were they they got after it i mean and 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 more power to them you said you said you were there it was close to the press room so so you could hear it bumping they were going nuts in there and like every (laughs) everybody every media member was just sitting there going like wow (laughs) <laughs> and and at this point like have fun like you know what what else are you going to do like i want them to buy into dp uh, you know i want them to believe i want them to to play their ass off like you know prove us wrong like get some wins get out of pig and tell you know by george to shut their mouths let's talk about gw though uh, a loss that really hurt i was there um kind of st- like at the time we played them i expected a win yeah, like yes 
our, our season, you know, our, our in-conference in season hadn't started the way I wanted it to. Um, and TCU was a tough loss. But, you know, GW, I still expected that win. You know, I never want to... you still should. <laughs> it's not I never... like they're, uh, you know, this elite team. They, they've they've had a, a bunch of terrible losses. They are still young. They tend to play fairly well against us. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they're always going to be beatable, at least this year. So... And um, Potter's out, and he destroyed yeah. us um, in D.C. So, you know, I'm excited to kind of get them in our in our arena at Eagle Bank. And there's a tailgate. You know, none of you are going to show up, even right. though we'll be out there grilling and drinking and, and hanging out and giving away, you know, stuff to our fans. Um, but we'll be out there. Uh, come join us. Shoot us a message at by George GMU. We'll let you know where we're at. Um, yeah, GW is still very much beatable. Uh, it's well, kind well of... newsflash: they lost to Fordham. Like, let's, right. let's. I mean, that's Fordham's <laughs> what lone win. It's yeah. like so. You know, if Fordham can do it, we can do it, and we're playing at home. On They're Saturday one and seven afternoon. on the road. Yeah. So, so like, <laughs> you know, th- this should be. Um, and then coming for us to come off the emotional high of a VCU game. I, I fully and they're coming off a thirty point drubbing uh, from Rhode Island, so we're maybe we're at this point going in two different directions, and uh, I'm hoping for another win. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's it's it, you know if if they don't have Potter, then I, I don't know what they really have. Four thirty tip off at Eagle Bank Arena. Um, you know, be there, support. I mean, it's sometimes you know we all need a little rejuvenation, a little electric shock. And beating a <laughs> beating a team like VCU can do that, you know. So come out at least, if nothing else, just say like, "Good job, guys!" Well, like, it, <laughs> w- w- one other thing that about the VCU game, uh, as much of a a great thing, uh, you know, as it was for us to win the game and, and use that momentum, uh, it just felt equally as great to know that VCU's bubble had potentially popped. Yeah. I mean that that was a you know a terrible loss for them. Um, in the in the sense that you know I don't even know if um, you know I, I I'd have to see what what games they have remaining, but they would need to beat like a Dayton or someone to to really kind of recoup from that. They do play Dayton. Um, yeah, you know, Richmond they have to win tomorrow. There's a or bunch on, of yeah, today a, whenever you're a, listening. A ton of must wins now um, after that loss. And and to be honest, I don't know if they they didn't look great and they haven't really played that well since the LSU win. They pretty much don't like have another loss on their schedule. Like they can't lose again, you know, like sure Dayton, but other than that, they almost have to like run the table and they play Davidson, Duquesne, St. Louis, Richmond. Um, Got to assume one of those is going to be a loss. Um, so we'll see. I mean, you know, when you lose to Rhode Island twice, and they're also probably going to be fighting to get in that large bid, it doesn't really look I, too I, good. I, I'd comfortably put Rhode Island in. So, but I, I would say that VCU uh, and Rhode Island kind of swapped uh, positions over the last like month or so, where VCU looked like almost like a guaranteed lock. But you know, yeah, they are struggling. And and again, in, just in terms of the eye test, I mean, kudos to, to what we did uh, the other night, and and I thought we played great defensively, and and they looked terrible. But but that's the thing. I, I think maybe a little bit of this may have been more of VCU just looking bad and losing this game. Yep, I would have to agree. Um, I'm glad you were able to go see Mason up close. Your pictures were tight. Make sure you follow us on everything at By George GMU. Uh, we got a new product dropping soon called Hey Ten Minutes. Um, so look for that as well on the By George Podcasting Network. And it's been fun catching up with you, Jonesy. I can't wait for homecoming coming up here in a week. I can't wait for Hoko, and I cannot wait for Brooklyn. Like, that's going to be so fun. We're already setting up stuff, so. We booked our Airbnb. It's a, it's a bachelor pad. Uh, Sully from Blackburn Review is actually staying with us. Ron, David, Chris, and myself are all all heading up there here from Wednesday to Sunday. doesn't matter when Mason gets there or when Mason leaves. We'll be there from Wednesday to Sunday. So let us know if you want to rage. We're actually already starting to connect a lot of A10 people. We're, def- we're going to get wrapped some beers together for sure. I can't wait for BK. I can't wait for BK. I cannot wait. And yes, um, <laughs> I doubt anybody's going to hit us up if they want to rage, but uh, <laughs> but we, we will be raging. So yeah. Love it. You can't go to New York and go to the Marriott.